Welcome everyone, we got Jacob and Danny here, and today the big question is, will Microsoft ever make an official Xbox handheld? So let's just go ahead and start and uh, get your thoughts here. Yeah, so I think this discussion is, is mostly uh, in thinking about in our conversations we've had. Um, we've been talking a lot, just personally, about like the Project Q, that uh, that PlayStation handheld that was announced, like, what was that, two weeks ago, week and a half? I don't know. Time, time is... All over the place for me, but yeah, I think it was a little, <laughs> little less than two weeks now. Something like that. But we were thinking, like, what if Xbox did the same thing? Because the main thing about the PlayStation Q that is so frustrating is that it can't stream the PlayStation Plus catalog. Like, it can't do the streaming to the device. It's only like a home device. It can, it can do consoles. Um, they can do the console to the device streaming, but, but nothing else. But Xbox, Xbox could do it all. I really do believe it. Plus, as you went over in. That amazing uh, concept video that <laughs> <laughs> we put together with the, with the, the 360 concepts. I think that Xbox can make something like aesthetically very pleasing too. I think if Xbox put out a handheld, there's like no way they don't make it cloud compatible. What, what do they even call it now? Is it X Cloud? I think cloud it's X Cloud. Because I, I know when I used to play it, it was like it, I'd, I'd open up the app and it'd be like X Cloud Beta. Yeah, it was Beta. But, I, uh, I think it's still in Beta. Yeah, I think so. So this is the first thing I think about whenever I see, whenever I think about Xbox handheld, is this a uh, real official Xbox 720 leaked video that, that we made a while back where I, I photoshopped. I, I, it's actually funny because it's almost exactly like the Project Q, mm -hmm. where I uh, <laughs> took an Xbox 360 controller, literally broke it in half and put a screen in the middle. Now this one has a tiny screen. That's like, looking at that, that's like, well, I don't know, three inch screen. But yeah, uh, yeah the, the, the whole concept of, of an Xbox portable is, is as I think something that we've all thought about for ages, like how cool it would be for Xbox to try to compete with uh, Nintendo and, and Sony in the handheld market. I, I guess at this point, it's really only Nintendo. Yeah, it's only Nintendo. Yeah, Sony. What, what was Vita, like 2012, maybe? 11. 11, yeah. yeah. So, And when, when did they stop making games for that? Like, it's been quite a long time. When did Sony stop making games, or when did everyone stop I making games? I guess everyone. <laughs> uh, I, I think, like, well, technically, I think, no, I, th I think the very last, like, physical or digital release was, like, 2020? 2021 it was it was something like that it was some some shockingly recent number sony sony hasn't made a game for the vita in like uh since like 2014 i think 2015 wow. i think it was i can't remember there might have i think like tearaway might have been like i could be totally off with the numbers i'm confused because i bought my i bought my vita and fell in love with it in like 2015 so everything's 2015 to me mm. but i feel like i don't remember any major sony games coming to the vita after the the PS4 um, really kind of took off, right? I, I think there were like a couple cross buy games, but yeah, they haven't been competitive in that space. So it's really just Nintendo. But with the yeah. Project Q, they're sort of coming back, kind <laughs> of. Yeah, if if you want to call it a, a handheld, but I, I guess the if you want to call it a comeback, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess if if you really want to get down to it, will Microsoft ever make an official handheld? And and, and my my answer is short answer is no. Long answer is also no. Uh, you know, I think if they were to ever do something, it would be, I actually think it would be very similar to the Project Q, but like we talked about, but would actually support their xCloud. Yeah. Um, and and I actually think, you know, if they made their own hand handheld, I think it would be something similar to that. that have you seen that Logitech? What was it called? Logitech oh. G, G Cloud or something? Yeah, that's that. that yeah. I, I actually think that looks really similar to what Xbox would make. I just, for some reason, got the, got the vibe of an Xbox handheld from that. Yeah, yeah, a little um, bit. Yeah, and if they were going to make something, I think it would look something like that. But I, I just think given the landscape of, xbox these days i don't see any reason they would make a handheld like it, especially not something that was a completely separate ecosystem from their xbox yeah and, i don't know man I, I i the whole xbox like thing confuses me because their whole hardware strategy i think is is super strange and it doesn't make any sense to me anymore because they they just like say one thing but then don't follow through with it right because they they have game pass they have the cloud service they basically they called like they're they were like one step away from just calling this new console the Xbox, right? <laughs> they yeah. almost didn't even put a name on it, but they I think they just had to distinguish between the um, the S and the X, right? That's, that's like the only distinguishing fact. They, but I think if they wanted to, if they didn't put out like the S, I think they would have just called it the Xbox. Kind of like what they, they call it the <laughs> yeah. Xbox controller, right? Instead of the series controller, even that's what everyone calls them. So yeah, it's like this thing where they're like, they're like well, we're just going to have like a unified system, right? We're, we have Game Pass on PC. We have like this whole thing. You're going to play Xbox on your TV. Is that is that a thing? Did, did they ever like implement that? I, heard, I thought I heard stories about that a little while ago. Like playing X, X Cloud on your TV? like a, Yeah, like Game Pass on like a device that isn't PC or Xbox. Yeah, I feel like, I don't, yeah, I don't know if they released any of those TVs yet, but I, I, I've definitely I heard of them before where... 
I've heard yeah. them talk about it before where, where they were trying to bring the, X, the Xbox Game Pass kind of like a Netflix app to a to a TV and yeah, you just hook up a yeah. controller. Kind of like, I guess, kind of like Stadia. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would just be a streaming thing. It would, yeah, and yeah. yeah, no, obviously like no actual onboard uh, experience for the games. But they say all this, but if they wanted to commit to something like that, I actually wouldn't be opposed to that. Uh, put Game Pass on PlayStation. Um, it's like, yeah. Why not? Like, I mean, like, just put like a streaming thing on PlayStation, and then you can, you can stream in an inferior quality. That would be the marketing idea, right? It's like you get an inferior quality. You get to stream your games to the competitor's console. If you want the real experience, you get to go buy an Xbox. That's kind of the idea, I think, right? You you make the streaming available everywhere, including maybe a, a handheld device would be sick, like really cool. Now, you kind of have this option available, right? You can do this. Yeah. You can do it on, like, the Backbone. <laughs> you could buy yeah. it. Or what is that? Is the company's called Backbone, right? I feel like they just call their product the Backbone, too. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I think there's, can... like, the dual center of the PlayStation version of the Backbone, but I think the Backbone is just a thing you can buy. And then when you use backbone the Backbone. One. The Backbone 1. Ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when you use that, it has a UI on it, like right? It's like an app that you, you launch. And on yeah. that is xCloud, right? Like you yeah. can, you, or GamePad, whatever they call it, right? So it's like that kind of already exists, a portable Xbox experience, like what we're saying. But the, the PlayStation Q, the Q Lite, whatever you want to call it, what that brings to the table, right? The, the possibility of that is a real Xbox controller or like, you know, even like you imagine like a like an elite controller, right? You Xbox elite controller stretched out with a screen in the middle. It's like, I don't know. It's not that unreasonable. And you could have you could have you could have it all. You could have the streaming. You could have maybe some uh, the real hope that everyone wants out of the the Project Q as well, right? It's, you could have like some native games. Not gonna happen, but yeah. maybe it could happen. Maybe. I think that really leads back into yeah, we were talking about the, the backbone. I, I think. The reason I don't think Xbox is ever going to have an official handheld is because there's there's so many options. Like you can do XCloud on your Steam Deck, right? Or you can do it on. Yeah, you can. It's it's actually harder to do it than it, it is to do like the PlayStation streaming. Like for for PlayStation, that's like the, why the Project Q is such a weird idea to me because like say say the Project Q is like I don't know 250 300. If it, if it's more like 200 or 150, I think it's more of like a reasonable product. If it's if it's more expensive than that though. At that point, it's like, just buy a Steam Deck because I'm telling you the experience on Steam Deck for PlayStation streaming is laughably easy. You you literally like go to desktop mode, install an app. Like, I'm not saying like you do anything fancy. You open the little store thing, type in Chiaki and download it and then just sign into your PlayStation account. There might be a few more steps uh, for like weird troubleshooting things. But like once you get that set up, it's just plug and play. It's just, <laughs> you can you can just boot up your Steam Deck, launch the app, play PlayStation games. The xCloud thing, the Game Pass thing is a little more complicated because you have to run it through Chrome. You have to like make a Chrome shortcut to get to like the Game Pass or the xCloud or whatever they call it, like like a website page. And then you can you can attach that shortcut to like your gaming mode on your Steam Deck. You can make it seamless, but there's like more steps involved. So there's no native native Steam Steam app for xCloud? No, not, not yet. Although... What's funny about like the Steam Deck is that Microsoft has a guide. Like if you go to like the help page, they have a guide for how to how to play like XCloud games on your Steam Deck. Like they tell you how to do it from Microsoft's like mouth directly. So hmm. they're like one step away from doing that without putting the work in to make it easy. But <laughs> yeah, well, I guess even if it doesn't work on Steam Deck, Steam Deck, you got the backbone. You've got. Yeah. The Logitech G Cloud, I think it's, it's called a G Cloud. It is called, yeah, that, that sounds right to me. I and, don't know. You're I making mean, me second guess it. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, might as well look it up now. Uh, you have the technology. Yeah, there it is, Logitech G Cloud. And yeah. yeah, I mean, just looking at that, it looks like, looks like an Xbox handheld. Yeah, you know, it's just with these multiple options, I feel like Microsoft, obviously we're putting words in their mouth because we're not behind the scenes there, but it, it seems like Microsoft is trying to create the, uh, the cloud infrastructure and they'll let all these other people make the devices. But if they were to make a device, I feel like it would be, similar to the the project q kind of style um yeah that would be the first inclination right there is another option though i was thinking about this right of the two manufacturers i actually think xbox is the more likely one to make the dedicated handheld it's just not going to be an xbox it's going to be like a windows pc like kind of mm-hmm. like the the rog ally like it would be more like that because yeah. the rog ally actually is more of of everything like it's more expensive obviously but it is more of a portable xbox than um anything else i've seen because you can install xbox game pass on it so not only can you stream games as long as it's not like too crazy powerful you can download games off of game pass and play them natively as long as they're on pc game pass so that i think is actually the closest thing we're going to get to an xbox portable um 
in like a premium sense, right? Where you can actually yeah. play games natively on it that isn't uh, being streamed. But that's not, I don't know. That's not really like, in some ways, I feel like that's kind of the Microsoft way these days, just to, I don't know, make things like inconvenient, not so seamless, just kind of make things like, ah, it's available, go figure it out. <laughs> like that kind of thing. But I don't know. They, they're a confusing company all around, but I don't think PlayStation's making it any easier by making the only portable console they offer a streaming only device for the people who already own a PS5 and they just can't be bothered to turn on their their, their TV. <laughs> I don't know. I, I joke about it. it yeah. It has use cases, but it's 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 very limited. Yeah, I, I didn't think about the the whole concept of the the, the ROG Ally, and, and I I feel like Microsoft could. Did I even pronounce that right? It's ROG Ally or Rogue? I think Ally. some people say Rogue al- Ally. <laughs> you say the Rogue Alley. <laughs> <laughs> Rog. I, I've already I've always said Rog, ROG. Rogally. Rogally. Yeah, Rogally. There we go. And it, <laughs> that, that is an interesting, interesting concept. I feel like Microsoft. I love could the make broccoli. Their... <laughs> I feel like Microsoft could come out with a, a handheld that's just straight up a Windows handheld. But now, now that I think about it, like has Microsoft Windows Phone? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I actually had a Windows Phone back in the day. No, you didn't. It was uh, back when they were like first came out. I was like, oh, I like to, I like to buy oh, stuff that was no. like that was cool or different. I bought a Windows Phone. It was, it wasn't too bad. It was just that there was no apps available for it hardly. But it wasn't too bad. Um, it just didn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, it was it was in the early days of smartphones, so the, the the Android and iPhones weren't that great anyways, and so they were all but. That's a whole other topic, but I, I think um, my Microsoft in general, like, have they ever made their own? Like, they don't make their own PCs. They make they make the operating systems. And, yeah. And, and so thinking about it, like, I don't, I don't. It's kind of weird that they make made the Xbox because they don't actually make any of the hardware for the PCs, at least that I can think of. Nope. And so, so I don't know. Maybe they could. Well, like, they do have the. Um, I think they make like, oh, what the heck are they called? The Surface. Oh, they make yeah, the, yeah, they but make those. that's not even what you're really talking about. Those are like yeah. laptop, tablet, hybrid, weird devices, like Windows 8 era. <laughs> I, yeah. are, are the surfaces still like a popular thing people do? I don't know. Yeah, I, I've seen them. I saw them a few years ago. People were using them like on construction sites and stuff. And like, okay, the foreman would walk around with them handheld and stuff. But sure. I don't, yeah, I don't know if they're still making those or not. But I, uh, I guess that doesn't help our case either way as to whether Xbox will, whether they'd make their own hardware or not. But. Well, I don't know. Make your own hardware is always a confusing thing because when it comes to consoles, right, people have this perception that, well, Sony makes the PS5. So therefore, everything in the PS5 is from Sony's factory. But that's not how console manufacturing works, especially these days. Console manufacturing is basically just a fancy version of PC manufacturing um, or like laptop manufacturing, basically, um, where it's kind of pick and choose parts. Whoops, sorry. (laughs) Holy crap. (laughs) <laughs> I told you it does that. <laughs> we had to cut that. We had to cut that. There's no way that, that audio is going to be... Wait, it doesn't even screw on at all? It just... <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it doesn't... I don't know if it's like threaded or, or I had the wrong size thing. I just have it hanging there. What the heck was I talking about? I don't even know what we're talking about, but I guess we can move on to the next kind of topic I made, which is... No, I know what I was talking about. You can't stop me. Hold on. I know what I was talking about. I was saying, like, hardware manufacturing. Like, like when, when Sony oh, makes yeah, the yeah. PS5, they don't make, like... Yeah, yeah, So, but the... Yeah, the reality is that, like, these are pick-and-choose parts off the shelf, basically. And they're customized a little bit to, to work in the specific use case of a console. But especially for Microsoft, like, the Xbox is basically just a plug and play pc like they pick parts and th- threw them together um more than playstation did anyway for the ps5 i don't know in some sense it's not that hard as long as they make some kind of hardware to work with a manufacturer to to make a portable console but i don't think it would be like a natural step for them because it's obviously not something they've ever done before but like i don't know is it like really that unreasonable to imagine like you think about like the series s right could is a is like a portable series s really that out of line no, because that was actually another thing is that the Series S, you can actually pretty easily make portable. Yeah. Like, mostly you portable. You have one, didn't you? <laughs> or maybe it wasn't a Series S. That was a that was an Xbox One. I do have an Xbox One laptop. That's Check right. out that video that's on the I'm screen right of. now if you want to see that, because that that's an interesting device. I need to make some more videos about it because it's very interesting. But like the Xbox Series S is so small anyways. You can buy those screens that you can attach to it. Yep. You can use a... You can... You can use like a, a portable battery. Portable batteries are pretty large, but you could, you could like integrate that pretty well and, you know, tuck it under. I, I'm sure... I don't know if anybody's made one, but I feel like you can make an attachment for the Series S, like for the bottom that clips on that has like a large battery in it, and it's basically mm-hmm. completely portable. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's completely out of the realm to a few years down the line 
the Series S hardware. Like you can do the same thing with a smaller chip and smaller, less cooling and stuff, and somehow stick that in a handheld, and basically have straight up a Series S handheld or something, and just all digital. Oh yeah. Um, I don't think that's out of the realm. I, I, I still don't think they're gonna do that. But no. Um, what what I think is more likely, and I don't even know if they'll do this, but maybe they'll partner up with somebody like some some company like. You know, all the companies making handouts now. Maybe they yeah. they make one and it's officially endorsed by Microsoft or something for Xbox Game Pass. The next question I have up: Do you wish there was an Xbox handheld, and where do you wish there was one in the past? Like what I'm thinking about when I think about this is like if man, if there was an Xbox handheld back in the 360 days, like oh, my man. mind would have been blown. Like if, if oh. Xbox came out in 2010 or anywhere between 2005 and 2013 and said, "Here's your Xbox 360 handheld," like I, I'd yeah. be like, "Take my money," but. Oh man! What do you think? That would have been unreal. Like I don't even know what that would have meant. Because like, you talk about like them being like a hardware, like a weird company, Microsoft in general for hardware manufacturing. But that's like I think that was even more true back in the 360 days because of all the Red Ring stuff. So any hardware from 360 or from Microsoft was always going to be like oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what to think about this. But oh man, just the idea of portable like that's what was so appealing about the vita right like it was sold on a lie that you know it was a straight up lie the idea was like it's a ps3 portable it's it's a portable ps3 it's like eh, it's like 540p and it's more like a ps2 but it's it's pretty close ish kind of and they they did some cross uh you know, support like like sly cooper uh four and stuff like where like there was a cross by thing and they kind of look mostly similar it was kind of actually like the difference between the series x and the series s like in terms of power level and like what they could do so i feel like that could be a very similar thing that's why i just i think about now and like the series s and the way that could be made portable but the 360 back then it's like you think about like the time um imagine like the xbox one right in, in a hypothetical world where the xbox one was good uh <laughs> they they like didn't do all the crazy drm stuff the the, it's a TV cable box <laughs> kind, of, kind of stuff. They just made it like a normal console um, that was like a normal size. Um, and they, along with that, like announced like a portable 360 um, instead of just saying that the 360 was your device if you didn't want to be connected online. Do you remember that? Oh, man, what a different time. Yeah. Uh, it was an interview. I'll have to show the clip, but it's it was an interview where a guy asked, um, I think it was Major Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> um, a, a guy asked him, and, he, and Major Nelson was like, "We have a we have a a, a console you can play offline. It's called the 360." <laughs> <laughs> it might not have been Major Nelson. It might have been the CEO at the time. I don't That's remember funny. what was his what was his name. Do you remember? Yeah, he had remember. a real goofy no. haircut. That's what I remember about him. But yeah, it was Bill a, Gates. Bill Gates himself. <laughs> That would have been awesome. Fortunately, we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360. Man, those are some good times when you saw those those Xbox 720 renders and like the, the videos people would make about the Xbox oh, 720 yeah. and like that that, that just kind of adds to the 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 narrative of how cool it would have been if they came out with some sort of Xbox handheld back then. Of course, it was never going to happen, and we I think everybody wished it would happen, but it just obviously did not. And that that would have been like if they had come out with a 360 handheld i guess it would have been probably right in the middle right between psp and ps vita because psp was like 2005 maybe oh yeah you're thinking more early i was thinking like maybe they could do it in between the 360 and xbox one yeah yeah i don't i don't know either way but um that <laughs> that reminds me about the psp back in 2005 i think i heard about the psp from a newspaper article like my mom my mom was like hey honey right. did you hear about this new console that's coming out here's a here's a newspaper article about this oh, this man. uh psp and my mind was blown because i like i'm i'm sitting there <laughs> playing ps2 and i'm like whoa ps2 on the go and mm -hmm. i see it in the you see it in the newspaper and it's like 250 dollars whatever it was I'm like oh i don't have that much money i'm no. 10 years old or whatever and like I, that is just a random memory. But. Yeah, the PSP was a whole different level of weird. Like, I, I think that console is completely insane. Like, the way, like, what they were able to pull off, and you think about it, it's like, people people make fun of you in your, like, your, your videos about your portable consoles, about, like, well, I can't read discs, so it must not be a true portable <laughs> console, right? Because you have to install the games, like, digitally, basically. Um, but that really was, like, no, we just put discs in the console. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? That's not weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally, I, I don't know. I think about like a cool, like custom solution someone can make for like a GameCube portable where you make like UMDs with like a plastic case. You put your, <laughs> you put your GameCube case in there, like close it shut and you put that inside of your GameCube portable and read your games that way. Like I feel like the GameCube is the only one you could do it with because it's got relatively small discs. But yeah. the funny thing about the PSP, the UMDs is like, 
it had that whole case and people would still destroy their, oh, their discs, discs like they got we get so, so many up like <laughs> we get so many that are so gross i guess uh, people the, throw those things in their pockets <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe it was actually bad that they put the cases around because people are like oh it's case, it's got a case it's indestructible and yep but the thing is even like th those cases sucked like i had Terrible. i had a carrying case for my psp i'd, st I'd put all my psp games in, like the slots and then i open it back up and they'd like the the cases would be like press pushed down and like breaking because it's just like yep. too much press pressure for the the case to handle uh, yeah, and if it wasn't like closing shut, it like wouldn't read the. Di it was terrible. Yeah, I, so I'm so issues. happy they moved on to cartridges for <laughs> yeah. the Vita. So it was very superior. But the UMB the, was really cool though. It was just like it, it, it was, was. It was cool to have a disc inside of a little casing. It was just a cool thing. It was just crazy. Like they were like too. It was it was like on paper they were too early for the for that whole thing. Like they just were like too ahead of their skis on that. But they they just doubled down on it. They were like, yeah, we're gonna put discs in the portable console, and it <laughs> yeah. actually worked out. PSP was a pretty big success. Uh, all things considered, but may yeah. maybe not for the reasons that they intended. It's mostly <laughs> a piracy machine, but <laughs> uh, it was it was still pretty cool. And yeah, I guess I guess if you're thinking in that era, it would be more of like a portable original Xbox, um, and that would yeah. have been again we're 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 chalking it up. We're trying to think about like power level and all that. I don't think it would literally be an Xbox. I think you're thinking like it would have a dedicated library. Yeah, yeah. That's that's that's. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what my. I think that's what all, all of our hope was that you know yeah. back in the day they'd have their. I mean, it's like it's 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 its own library, but in the same way, like clearly, this PSP had games that were like on the PS2 and just like ported, and I'm sure there were some PSP games that were from the PS3. I don't I don't remember, but I just specifically remember when I first got a PSP or heard about the PSP, I was like, oh, I can play my PS2 games on the go. So that's always yeah how I've equated it because it was like there were some games I had on the PS2 and they were advertising for the PSP, and I was like, oh man, I can Jack and Daxter Lost Frontier, the best yeah. PSP game, or Daxter. Kind yeah, of felt played, like that I same I, thing. I think, but I, played, I think I played Dexter. There are there are a lot PSP. of like PS2 cross gen uh, yeah. ports, but yeah, I mean, but it's the same kind of thing because like they they're always going to sell the portable console like it's going to be the current console but portable. But realistically, it's only ever going to be the last console portable, kind of in between, right? I mean, that's yeah. that's true. Like all the way, you look at like the Game Boy Advance. They basically sold that as. There, I mean, at least they were honest. They didn't try to say that the Game Boy Advance was going to be a portable GameCube or N64 or whatever. Because <laughs> the Game Boy Advance, what was that, 2001? I think so. Was that before the GameCube? Or it was around the same time. But the, the point is that, like, the Game Boy Advance wasn't trying to be like, we're going to do an N64. No, it was the console before that. <laughs> the Game Boy Advance was more like a, like a, like a souped-up Super Nintendo. Yeah. It was like a super super Nintendo more than it was like an N sixty four portable, but uh, the, nowadays with like the Steam Deck and, and and even the Switch, I think as like kind of underpowered as that is, like it is still very impressive and is closer to being a modern console. Like it's kind of like a Wii U, it really. I mean, in terms of power level, I mean, it's a little more powerful, but like it's it's still crazy we're even able to get that in a portable portable form factor, and then the Steam Deck is pretty close again in the same vein it's more like 720p instead of 1080p but it's kind of like a portable ps4 um in, in a lot of ways so you imagine there could be like something like that but back in that day i think there was more the psp definitely wasn't a portable ps2 it was more like maybe a souped up ps1 in terms of like the quality of the games you were getting yeah. so that's my point so like if if a portable xbox console came out around then it would be like kind of a downgraded but portable version of the original xbox so probably like 480p, which the original Xbox did as well. Maybe slightly improved graphics or literally like the same graphics um, as what you could get on a console like that. All they had to do, you think about like, it's actually like not that hard to imagine how something like that could be successful because all you got to do is put Halo on it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> dude, could you imagine Halo. during yeah. the Halo 3 days if there was Halo Portable? <laughs> Oh my god. Halo would be like Halo's already like big, but I mean back in the day it was ridiculously massive. Everyone played Halo. Um even if you didn't play Halo, you played Halo. Uh but that would have been like a whole different level if you could have taken Halo to the schoolyard. <laughs> <laughs> like didn't they try that? Did you ever see the leaks of the DS Halo game? No. This was this was a thing. Oh, you have to look into this story. Look look this up real quick. We have to look this up. This is a real <laughs> game. Like it was Halo Pedia. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That existed. if I remember correctly, you're, you're reading it now, but if I, I'm just going to spit this off the top of my head, it was like, I think an IGN story where like this guy basically had like a, a, an inside scoop that there was a Halo game being made for the DS. I don't remember who made it. I think it was like a team that made a couple other like first person adaptations for DS. Actually, it might've been like the Metroid Prime guys. 
I feel like if it wasn't those guys, it was going to be in that same style, right? Like the Metroid, you remember the Metroid Prime Hunters? That game for DS? Yeah. So it was basically like touchpad controls uh, for first person, which worked surprisingly well. <laughs> um, so it would have been kind of like that. It was a team working on it. It was pitched. It had like a demo available and that got leaked out to like IGN, but I don't think he had footage of it. So it was kind of chalked up. It was like, that's not real. Xbox would never port something to Nintendo. But it was totally real and like years later surfaced up and there's like there's like actual gameplay footage you can see of this uh, DS Halo game. Dang. So I don't think they ever greenlit it for production, but it kind of would have been sick. But you wonder like yeah. why? Like why did they can that? Maybe it's yeah. because they were making a portable Xbox at one point, but they just never they came out. Thoughts about it. That, that is interesting because I think Halo would have been great on download play. Oh, um, <laughs> dude. You got, you got your friend next to you. You're playing. You're shooting them with the... It just writes itself. Like yeah. Halo is just the game you think of when you think of like couch co-op. Like, not even couch co-op, like couch multiplayer, right? You got a group of four friends. You're squinched, you know, in front of your 14-inch your CRT TV. You're all, you're all clustered <laughs> up together with your controllers running off of your, your 240p maybe composite cable uh, original Xbox. And it was awesome. Everyone loved that. Yeah. So if you imagine, like, you just everyone's got, like, their own little handheld, but you only have one copy of the game. You could, like, link up. Oh, my God, link cable. <laughs> like, <laughs> that would be so fun. Like, uh, it's such a shame. That would have been amazing. Yeah, that would have been cool. No. But uh, I guess the uh, last but not least, if you're CEO of Microsoft right now and you have to make an Xbox handheld, I am Bill Gates. What are you? <laughs> yeah, if you're Bill Gates right now, what does your handheld look like? If you're making I shouldn't an have Xbox gone to that handheld, island. And, and I guess there's, <laughs> I guess there's two I'm different ways. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess there's two different ways you can go this this way. There's like, you can go the somewhat reasonable route, or you can go the absolutely ridiculous but very cool Xbox handheld. So explain to me your. Your 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 market your 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 CEO you're pitching this to the marketing team right now. The oh, Xbox such handheld. a loaded question because <laughs> I think I think the whole like so okay CEO of Microsoft or or you are literally um what's it Phil Spencer I don't, I don't know you're right. you're just an X, you're at Xbox and you run you run the show okay so you're <laughs> Phil Spencer that's a big difference yeah, yeah, yeah. because if you're CEO sure. of Microsoft I mean that's a that's a whole other load of load sure, of change because okay. <laughs> I mean Microsoft's a lot that's the thing about Microsoft that's like so crazy to people like when Microsoft does their like business meetings they barely even bring up Xbox like <laughs> Xbox is like a drop in the bucket in terms of like Microsoft yeah. money. Uh, they're like barely an important conversation, yep. um, but like meanwhile in PlayStation land, like the P the, the PS Five is the thing that is like determining Sony's fate as as a company. So it's like totally different the way that they same with Nintendo. Obviously, like the Switch is the only thing they can really like. At least Sony has TVs, I guess. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> they, can, they have their uh, their MP3 players and their their uh, whatever the sound bars or whatever. But <laughs> most of the PS Five is like the main thing. But Nintendo's only got the Switch. Microsoft. Xbox could die and Microsoft would live for another 100 years. Yeah, so. that's, that's honestly probably why they have so many issues right now. Is that exactly. They, just, they don't care enough to... So, but that's what I mean. Like, that's why it's a big difference. Like, if you're CEO of Microsoft, you got bigger fish to fry than Xbox. Honestly, I kind of think the, the, the smart way to do it um, would just be to kind of double down on the, on the strategy of just turning Xbox into their gaming brand and just make it so, like, there's no such thing as an Xbox console. They just make xbox branded devices that can play xbox games and you can run the xbox app on your windows environment that is literally just an xbox dashboard that could just play all the xbox games it's like really it's just like simple and effective in that way but if you're if you're if you're phil spencer right if your job i think that's actually the more interesting question right because phil spencer has a very limited job right phil spencer has to convince microsoft why things are important and why they should dump tons of money into something that doesn't make them any money <laughs> <laughs> like that's a much more difficult job. So I have a lot of respect for Phil Spencer in that way, but I think like, oh man, that it, the things he's been saying recently are terrible. So it's it's like a very not enviable position, <laughs> Redfall. Um, <laughs> yeah. So in terms of hardware, though, it's a that's what I mean. It's like kind of a complicated, loaded question because there's a lot involved in terms of like what you have to manage with Xbox. So like, I get why they don't do certain things, but you you rewind a bit, right? You're Phil Spencer, not right now, but you're Phil Spencer like when he first like took office <laughs> when he first like became the head of xbox um which was what a couple years into xbox one i, I want to say it was no like no idea honestly i think it was like 2015 um he he really became like the head of xbox um i know he's had like a lead role for a long time but that was like the big thing when when he like took it over um so if you're if you're the lead of xbox at that time i really think that if they had 
d- gone down a different route because I, I think it's pretty clear at this point that the decision to make like this weird curve to like cloud streaming and stuff and game pass in some ways is good but in most ways has been negative not just for microsoft but for the entire games industry like game pass is a weird product because it's so like it, it makes hardware not important like it, that's what's so odd about it. it it really emphasizes everything and that's why like i actually think that it's why they they're not going to make a portable device anymore but the way that I would want Microsoft to be would be to go back to their roots and figure out why the original Xbox was successful and most importantly, figure out why the, even in the Red Ring of Death like, like, like era, why the 360 was so big. And it's because it was a cool console that everyone wanted to talk about because it had cool games that appealed to like teenagers, young adults, and adults, like in general. It was a more adult-focused console than I think even Sony was really focusing on at the time. The, the PlayStation wasn't a kid's yeah. console, but it wasn't... It didn't have Halo, right? That's that's the difference. Um, and it was forward-thinking, too. It was very multiplayer-focused. That's why the 360 was such a big deal. Um, so I think like capitalizing on that kind of mentality about why um, Xbox was successful in the first place would put them in a much stronger position nowadays. You you have a console that's not just the most powerful console. It's mostly, it's it'd be more about like, what could you do on this console that will allow for more fun games, more crazy um, experiences with, with your friends with Halo. You wouldn't allow Halo Infinite to come out in the state it did, that's for sure. <laughs> I really think that like, that's kind of the, I know it's a lot of Halo, but like to, to pretend that Halo isn't like the thing about Xbox is like totally ignorant. Um, so that's why like Halo back in the day for a portable machine would have been amazing. But yeah, if, if 2015 you're Phil Spencer and, and you see the direction they were going with VCR uh, <laughs> basically on your on your Xbox and TV programming and stuff, and then you see like the design of the console, it's like, no, screw this. We're gonna trash all this and we're gonna we're gonna make a gaming console again. Instead, they've gone this like weird halfway point where they're kind of doing that. The Series X is on paper a great machine, but I don't think it runs particularly well. Like I think I don't know. I feel like I, I kind of feel bad for a lot of Xbox gamers because I periodically use my Series X, but I find it infuriating to use. Like, I, I think like basic things like sharing clips or even just saving clips is like weirdly difficult. On PS5, you literally just hit the share button and it's like, you want to save the last hour of 4K gameplay? And it's like, yeah, you can do that if you want to. Go have fun. <laughs> Xbox is like, I don't know, you can only have uh, uh, three minutes of 4K footage. It's like, why? Like, it's just, why are you getting in my way like this? So, in the whole UI, it's just a total disaster. We, I don't know. It, we talk about that you know, all the time where it's like um, the the UI of the series consoles is just the same one as the the Xbox One consoles, right? Yeah, even the same. It's basically the same as the, the late 360s almost. And oh. that's the most annoying thing is that it's like kind of lost its personality. Um, yeah, but I guess that's my answer overall. It would just be in general, in like a philosophical way, just to go back and focus more on the gaming. Like just make gaming fun on the device, uh, kind of like Sony's focused on. Um, yes, the PlayStation does other things too, but it's like it's always yeah. been like games first, um, and I, I feel like Microsoft has totally lost the plot on that. And if you're a games first company, I that's where like the idea of like portable machines and and that kind of thing comes in and actually becomes appealing. At this current moment, why would you make a portable console when you could just make Game Pass on the ROG Ally? That's the answer for yeah for modern Xbox. What is your answer to what if you were Phil Spencer? <laughs> Well, I'm going the route of uh, mm. the the ridiculous route, like the the route that oh. we never actually take, but I, I think would be cool. It actually kind of somewhat goes along with what you're saying is kind of go back to your roots of like the, I don't know, 2005, 2010 days when you're 360. And, and, and you literally, it actually goes along with the Project Q as well. And you, you literally build a console that looks like this uh, Photoshopped Xbox 720 thing I made a few months ago. And then as, as weird as the Project Q is, I think it's kind of an endearing design because of how like funny and interesting it is that it's just like a, a ps5 controller split in half the back of that like, console makes me laugh every time <laughs> yeah like like it, it's console. funny it's funny and dumb as it is it's like it's still like it's cool because like they it's literally just a ps5 split controller split in half and i think it'd be awesome for the xbox to essentially do the same thing maybe even go back to their roots and like use a 360 controller like, maybe, the duke maybe, controller <laughs> yeah like maybe, maybe they could implement the features of the new the series x controllers but but I mean, they could almost go some like the, the Hyperkin ones where they're, you know, mm. they're, they're, they're making Series X controllers, but they're Xbox 360 or OG Xbox themed. And then... Have they made a 360 controller? 
It's coming out soon. What? It's called the Xenon. Dude, oh my god, that's so awesome. I didn't yeah, know that. I, I had a couple pre-ordered. I actually I actually emailed these guys. I was like, hey, can I get one early maybe? And they yeah. never, never oh responded. Oh my god. They never responded back. So that is such but, uh, an awesome idea. <laughs> but I have a couple pre-ordered. It, but of, of of course it's wired, so I'm never actually gonna use oh. it like legitimately, but I, it's a cool as a cool device or cool concept. But uh anyways, I I think if they literally went back and made something like the the Project Q but with a 360 controller on the sides and and uh, like obviously that's ridiculous and something that they would never do, but I think it'd be awesome. And they they not only can it do X Cloud and play Series X games, but it could, it also has its own line of games. Yeah, a bunch of ridiculous crap is never gonna happen, but I just, that that'd be awesome. I don't know. It, it, it's clearly Microsoft. Like honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. I think we've talked about this, but I, I think it, if you look realistically right now, ten years from now. It, xbox probably is just an app on your playstation like it sucks man i i I don't want it to be true but it's what is xbox even doing to to justify the purchase like i think i it's a harsh reality but it's like i have a series x i bought one in 2020 uh like a month after it came out there have been like i don't know two games on it that like i actually thought were were good and they were on game pass so i didn't even buy them so i don't even own them so i don't i I just don't have any like permanent attachment to the console it's just there Like, that's the best way to describe this, the Series X. It's just there. Yeah, I mean, I think the best use case right now is to buy a cheap Series S and just get yep. Game Pass. Because you, yep. you can get a Series S for 200 bucks almost and mm-hmm. um, throw, throw Game Pass on there and you at least get some whatever games are on Game Pass every month. And that's honestly all I use my Xbox for is Game Pass games that, I, yep. that pop up. I'm like, oh, it looks fun. Let me play that. And, yeah, uh, I just don't have the thing. bandwidth anymore for, like, I, I just don't have the time to play Game Pass games anymore. Like, I have other things to play on other consoles. I mean, Zelda just came out. When am I going to play Game Pass? I have, <laughs> I, I have the next, oops, I have the most month of my life dedicated to Zelda. I can't I can't be playing uh, random AA games on, on, on Game Pass that come out every month. Yeah. It's a cool service, but it just kind of, like, makes it unexciting, I would say, to be an Xbox gamer. It's, it's like, what does that even mean? Like, wh- what do you even play? Like, other than just third-party games or kind of small interesting sometimes they're interesting but the games come to other places and it's i'm not really opposed to just paying for my games so that i actually even if it's digital at least i own them you know <laughs> at least i can like not be guaranteed they're gonna sh- get off the service at some point but i think it's an interesting strategy it's just it's sad coming from a company that was the market leader of the entire gaming industry for only one generation that sucks i don't yeah. i don't think that's a good thing um yeah, and it yeah, it sucks for me too because I'm, I'm really a hardware guy, so I like seeing new devices and new hardware and stuff. So seeing Xbox as a player just kind of basically vanishes. Yep, it kind of sucks. They're next like Sega. Yeah, and and same things with with uh, that's why the I think the early two thousands are cool to to look at with consoles because you had you had so many options with, between the the Dreamcast, the PS2, oh, yeah. PS1, even the um, all the portables. You know, Game Boy Advance. And if you if you look back, it was kind of funny because Game Boy Advance came out in like two thousand one. The DS was only three years later but yeah. that's a whole other topic but um, well it's not really because i think i think you're getting into the idea that like back in the 90s and the mid 2000s the 90s had what was interesting about the 90s is that you had a lot of different players coming in who never made consoles before a lot of them were terrible um <laughs> yeah. i mean you, you had like apple making the pippin you had uh yeah. that reminds me i need to buy one of those you have you oh my god <laughs> it's such a weird machine uh i mean you had like the 3do you, you even had like uh what, what neo geo you had the, the atlantic consoles the, like the engage oh yeah. <laughs> the engage yeah, that's a console all right uh you you had a lot of different like players coming in and trying to make um their own statement in the games industry and the only one that really came out of that that was successful and is now the market leader is playstation um but and then you saw Sega die the next generation. But in then the two thousands, you had like really quick releases back to back to back, um, and things have just kind of spread out slowly as we become more comfortable with having our consoles for really long periods of time. It's crazy to think about this, but let me let me break your brain a little bit. The PS two came out in two thousand one, and the PS three came out. Or no, sorry, PS two came out in two thousand. My, my bad, two thousand. PS three was two thousand six. Original Xbox, two thousand one. Xbox 360 was 2005. <laughs> like, that's four years. That's only yeah. four years. What that means is that if we were living in that same time frame, we would be getting the next generation of Xbox next year. <laughs> yeah. Like, crazy. actually, or would it be, no, I think, yeah, it would be 2024. Yeah. Like, that's completely nuts. Like, I don't, <laughs> but we just don't yeah. live in that time anymore. I could realistically see this generation, especially if they both launch, like, the, you know, get a Series Z and the PS5 Pro. Um, 
Yeah. I could see this generation lasting a decade easily um, or a little longer. And then Xbox doesn't have a console anymore. Uh, Nintendo is still making the Switch to make it the most <laughs> sold console ever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this rate, they could probably just keep selling it forever and keep selling it like that. I mean, I just bought a I just bought an OLED Switch for like three hundred and fifty dollars. So like, and it's and it's a console that and all, for for the profit they're making off of that. Think about that, right? Like, how much money did they just make off me in profit? A ridiculous number for yeah. how cheap it is to manufacture that console. <laughs> like, they could just keep making that forever. So I don't know what the console market is going to look like, but I certainly don't see a, a portable Xbox happening. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, neither do I. But yeah, let us know what you think down below in the comments. Let us know if you think there'll ever be an Xbox handheld. Let us know what you think. An Xbox handheld will look like in 2005 and uh, curious to hear your thoughts. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.